Hey, what's up YouTube? This is uh, HDD Recovery. Today we're recovering this Sony flash drive. This device is not getting recognized when it's plugged into the USB port, so we're going to remove the memory chips from it and try to recover data directly from them. So let's take this unit apart. Usually there's a seam somewhere in the middle. Just going to work it through. Open up the unit. So when we have this device opened up, so this is what our device looks like on the inside. Uh, you can see that the connector is really well attached. All four pins, they don't even look like they're had any damage to them. So the memory is Samsung in our case and there's two chips, one on the top side and one on the bottom. And the controller is made by Silicon Motion and the part number on it is, we can see, SM3255QAB. It's a fairly common controller. Actually, we see it on a variety of different uh, flash drives. Majority of them are Lexar. And uh, Samsung memory, hopefully it uh, doesn't have any defects on it. Uh, we'll get a pretty clean, read out of it. So in order to do this, we will have to remove these chips from the device. Um, prior to that, I'm going to actually mark them. It's going to be the first one, and this is the second one. So I'm just going to mark them. Once they're marked, I'm going to prepare the uh, preheater and clamp the device into our jig for uh, the chip removal. Once uh, we've removed the memory components from the device, they obviously have to be cleaned up. There's a bunch of uh, flux residue on them, as well as uh, excessive solder on the pads. That excessive solder from the pads needs to be wicked out so that the, the uh, pads are completely flat and leveled with the surface. This unit is going to be going into an adapter, and that is the main purpose of actually cleaning this chip before it goes into the adapter so that the adapter has little tiny needles that will be contacting these little dots here and uh, they all have to be on the same uh, same height if they're not the same height obviously the connect connector is not going to be making a uh, solid connection with those pins so in order to clean this component up we're just going to use our uh, soldering iron and the wick information about these tools will be in the description of the video if you're interested so uh, just check it out on there That's component number one. Mm. You guys can see that the uh, little excess bumps of solder are now gone, that the chip is flat. We'll lay it, lay it into this tub for now. I'm going to do the same thing for the chip number two.
weapon of choice for recovering this specific flash drive will be uh, the Ruslutes uh, Visual NAND Reconstructor. In our case, it's a TLGA chip made by Samsung. These chips are slightly um, narrower than the standard, so the socket doesn't really guide it properly into the pin positions. So we, with the help of microscope, we're just gonna line it up really quick. Okay, that should be good. And this is really easy to kind of connect to the device. It's got two rows, single rows of uh, headers. They just go in like this and lock in the reader. Once the device is locked in the reader, uh, we have to power up the source, uh, the software for it. Now, usually, I would name the case by the name of the controller and follow up with the customer's name. So in this case, we're gonna name it SM3255Q. SM3255Q AB. I'll leave the name out. Okay, so this is the workspace of the tool. It kind of <laughs> looks like a Photoshop a little bit or paint or something like that. Uh, <laughs> but it, I'll, I'll show you the basics of this tool. So right here, the first element that we have, it's, a, it's, it's our reader. First thing we always have to do is get the ID of the chips. Now, if we get the ID on crystal zero and crystal one, that means this unit has two crystals inside and both of them are reading ID. That means the connection is 50% guaranteed that it's good. Okay, so we're gonna select OK. The next thing uh, to do is to determine uh, the configuration for that specific chip. Uh, different chips would have different configurations, meaning they will be laid out differently. So uh, the page size will be different, the block size will be different, uh, how big the dump file is. All that information changes from uh, one unit to the next. And um, what to this tool actually is uh, very, very useful for is uh, if, for example, we get a chip that does not have a configuration already pre-made, this chip makes it possible to actually make your own configuration file for it. So in our case, we're just gonna go ahead and select not set. And already it gives us options for uh, similar components. So over here, we can see that all of these begin with K9, so most likely they're all Samsungs. And what we have to do is just got to look at the markings on this chip. This is our second component. Just going to quickly look at the markings on it. Yeah, so these are, these are the two uh, units that we got here that are perfectly matched uh, markings that are on the component. So what makes them different? Well, going back to uh, reading the ID portion, uh, we remember that it gave us two crystals and the first configuration file only has one listed So we're going to select the second one and the second one gives us uh, Two crystals in place. So we're going to go with that configuration Okay uh, one of the most um, One of the most uh, important parts of this specific tool and um, It's what makes it very very easy to understand and very easy to work with is a next option and the next option is it allows us to actually power on the chip and view the contents live unlike many other um, tools out there that you have to wait until the reading is done so then you can begin analyzing the quality of the data that is extracted from there uh, up here we can actually adjust our algorithm for reading prior to actually spending time in reading it and you know it's not a huge deal when you're dealing with one gigabyte card or a four gigabyte card 
or even 16 gigs will read fairly fast. But when you're dealing with 128 gigabytes and you need to read them out, you don't really want to spend several times reading the same content in order to achieve the highest quality read of the device. And uh, that's where this uh, feature comes in really handy because it allows us to view what uh, current setup for the configuration, current setup uh, for the power modes, etc., will give us as a result if we select to extract the data from it in that shape. So the next feature that is extremely useful is the bitmap view of the data, of the dump and the chip. So as you can see, this looks like a bunch of noise. Looking at this and going all the way up until, let's say this point, leads us eventually to the service area. Okay, and what I want you to pay attention to is the amount of these odd dots in the white lines throughout the service area. You see how they're kind of here and there. This is empty space. Yeah, so looks like we have bit errors and we'll try and see if we can improve the quality of this uh, information as it comes off the chip by adjusting the power modes, okay? So we're gonna turn off the power from the device right now. We can't browse what it looks like because there is no power going to the chip. And I'm gonna go back into configuration and we see there's a section here that says power, and IO power. So we're gonna reduce the power, let's say down to two and a half volts. Select OK and power on. And approximately we can see that, you know, it's got quite a bit of dots per block. This is, that horizontal line shows the end of one block and beginning of another. So within the block, we got quite a bit of uh, bit errors. So we're just gonna start scrolling down and seeing if we get any improvements from lowering that volume, uh, that power. So far, not much improvement. Gonna go back and drop this down to two and a half, two and a half as well. Power on. And yeah, that seemed like it made a little bit of improvement. Not a lot, but a little bit, but that's not all. We can go further and we can actually reduce this down all the way to, let's say I want to go to two. Power it back on. And we can see that this actually made quite a bit of a difference because the dots are not as frequent as they used to be with 3.3 and 2.2. So the, we'll try and step it up to the least power that this thing can work on. It's 1.8, power this thing back on and see what that will give us as a result. And you can see that the amount of dots in the block had significantly dropped. We used to have maybe uh, 50 to 60 dots in here and now maybe eight. And uh, that's not all, like after the, the image is extracted from, um, from the chip, we will still be able to apply error correction code or BCH to it to improve the quality of the read and correct the errors in, within the read. So this process may take, you know, um, depending on how comfortable you are with the tool, anywhere from half an hour to maybe an hour and a half, depending on how uh, quickly you can work. It really depends on that. Uh, but the results uh, will highly depend on the quality 
of uh, the uh, extracted data from the image. The cleaner the data is from the image, the better the results of the recovery will be. And looking at this case as it stands, I think that we have a really good, show, really good shot at uh, getting close to 99% of this flash drive recovered. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this controller is very common. It comes across uh, our lab very frequently and a variety of different brands of flash drives. So if you guys have a unit that is not recognized and uh, if you need your information recovered off of it, using this tool, we will be able to uh, get it for you. So the information how to reach us is on the screen or in the description of this video. I will post a bunch of useful links including uh, the manufacturer of this um, uh, equipment that we're using in this case um, in a description um, also with soldering equipment and other things that I used in this specific showcase. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be shooting the portions uh, of the process to demonstrate how certain things are working and how certain things are done. So if you guys are interested in data recovery subject, subscribe to this channel, hit like for this video because we will be back with more. See you next time.